For my presentation, I chose Julie Miretu. She is one of the most celebrated female artists today. Although Miretu is an American citizen, she was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia in 1970. In 1977, with her country in the midst of a revolution, her family fled to East Lansing, Michigan. Today, she lives in New York City, but often travels to Berlin, Germany, where some of her paintings are done. Her paintings, which can be described as semi-abstract, are quickly purchased by collectors, often selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. She received $5 million for her painting entitled Mural, which hangs in the lobby of the Goldman Sachs building in New York. Mural is appropriately named because it's 80 feet long and 23 feet high. Although Mural is her largest piece to date, many of her paintings are over 100 square feet. Because of this, she employs a team of assistants to help her in all phases of her work. Miretu is best known for her layered paintings. The first step involves precise tracing of buildings, maps, charts, and blueprints of various places and times which are projected onto her canvas. This task is typically done by her assistants. For Miretu, architecture says much about politics and power. Buildings reveal a city's past, its history, its former glory, and its decline. Although these architectural renderings are the foundation of her work, they are almost imperceptible once additional layers are added. Shown here is her painting called Vanisseer. From this image, you can see the outline of buildings in the upper half. The next layer is another feature for which she is known for, her marks, which are small black shapes. Each of her paintings has hundreds of them. They represent people, clustered together, moving as if migrating or in a battle. In the lower half of Vanisseur, you can see the countless marks of various sizes. Some are purposely smeared to produce a gray tone which can become transparent. Miretu calls these ghosts. In Easy Dark, another layer is comprised of long lines, both curved and straight. They can be black, white, or any other color. They all serve to provide contrast to the static vertical and horizontal lines of the buildings. They provide movement, expressing the energy and constant activity found in urban environments. And that a good example of this is a swirling red line in the center of her painting, Easy Dark. In this painting, we can also see geometric shapes of various colors. There is a black rectangle and a transparent orange circle at the top. At the bottom is an opaque red semicircle. Less conspicuous are the many triangles of various shades of blue throughout the painting. Also included are random shapes like the purple and green arches and the long yellow teardrop shape. These shapes do not necessarily represent anything according to Muratu. They do cause the viewer's eye to move to different sections of the painting. However, in this painting called Stadia No. 2, the geometric shapes in the top third section represent the flags of all the nations of the world. I adapted my work from Meratu's painting called Berliner Plots. This image is a close-up of the painting. This work is atypical in the sense it features architecture without her marks, color, and geometric shapes. For my drawing of Hawaii buildings, I chose a gray sheet of paper and drew several buildings and landmarks of Hawaii where I was born and raised. I overlap the buildings to imitate Miretu's layering style. One structure is a barely visible sugar mill in Waipahu. I did this because sugar production was once Hawaii's biggest industry, but no longer. Most prominent is the Iolani Palace. Hawaii is the only state that was once a monarchy. I included a tiki god and a Japanese temple to represent the various religions still practiced. I also included the USS Arizona Memorial and a bird's eye view of Hickam Air Force Base because the military played a big role in Hawaii's history. Another way I applied Miratu's technique 
was to draw some buildings upside down. Diamond Head, Hawaii's most famous natural landmark, and Waikiki hotels can be seen. The little color I used is the blue around the edges to represent the ocean surrounding Oahu and the green and yellow near Diamond Head representing the beach and trees.